Greetings, beloved. Today I'm coming with a very different video. I came across this testimony of this wonderful woman called Erika Mokisa. I came across her video on YouTube and I said, I'm bringing this testimony to my family in Christ who are online because it touched me and there are things that I would like us to know. So let me play this video for you. Delivered. So me, I used to fight deliverance ministries. And then also I would go as a spy because I know that in churches there is this testimony time. Now, in, during the testimony time is when you get to know what the church, how the church is progressing. And you know how the church is progressing from the people because they are the church. Right. So a person comes, praise God. Amen. I thank God for my daughter. She's a, she's a good performer in class. I have hope in this girl. She will serve God. As for me and my family, we serve the Lord. Then we investigate where does she study? Who, uh, which class is she? Then we send an agent, the same school, the same class. Then we would get information. I thank God. I was given this offer. And please pray for me, saints. I'm going to apply for the visa. We say, okay, there's this intercessor who wants to go and upgrade. Uh, with her education and she needs a visa. If we have Christians in high places, we won't be able to deliver or to function or, or pass our agenda smoothly. So let us frustrate this plan. We, are, we summon an agent at the embassy to be there at the time this Christian has mentioned. I will go there on Monday morning. Please pray for these saints. Now, on Monday morning, we have an agent at the station, at the visa office. And before even they look at the person, they will say, visa denied. <laughs> and the person will come feeling so frustrated. But one thing you have to know is Satan is not all-knowing. He builds on the information that we give him. Right. Just think about it. It's so sad coming across um, uh, knowing something like this. I can say that because you would not always know what's happening. And that's why... When I'm sharing online, I'm, I'm talking about discernment, I'm talking about praying, I'm talking about asking God, knowing the will of God. Because, guys, not everyone in church is a Christian. And when we talk like that, some people think that we are raising fears to people. That is definitely not the intention. We want people to know that not everybody is who they say they are. So as she's saying in her testimony that they would be listening when someone is bringing a testimony in church. So they want to frustrate their lives. And sometimes these people are even very close to you. The enemy sends people that are so close to you. You know, when you first listen to what she was saying, that they would send the agent to the school that the person is going to attend, you know, and they also don't like um, an intercessor to be in, 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 in a place where there is, they have to be influential, where they have to make decisions that are sound. They have to frustrate their walk. It makes sense why it's hard for a person who's living godly that is experiencing so much problems because the devil knows that this person is, is, is in my way. You know, you are not just a, a Christian, but you are on fire and you want to stop the agenda of darkness because what intercessors are doing are are standing in the gap. They are praying for the church. They are praying for the will of God. And, you know, God is, is willing and he wants to hear people praying to him. And so I have to, I felt like I really have to come with this video, guys, because we need to know, we need to know, yeah, Jesus Christ has to make us to understand that the thief come at four to steal, kill, and destroy. But it's also important for us to understand that we are not alone but we got to be very wise. We have to understand this. I have to bring this video because, you know, many things happen. And you see someone going through the most and they think it's their season of going through the most when it's not always the case. That's why it's important to ask God, why am I feeling this way? Especially if you are a person who's fully committed to God. The struggles that are coming in is because they want to discredit you. They want you to doubt your strength. They want you to stop trusting God, to feel like the moment you started to commit, the moment you started to being faithful to God, your life turned out to be a mess because they want you to stop following God. They want you to stop because you're going to bring the problem to them. You are an issue. So let me bring another one so that we, we carry on. Has been accomplished and they sent me to, to target the men who are genuinely seeking God, okay. sent demons of lust in them, so that they start um, fornicating, masturbating, 
uh, committing adultery, if they are married, you know, I would send spirits like that, sit next to them, hinder them from listening to the word of God. When a man of God is about to, to, to pass a message that is going to free them from whatever situation they are going through, is when I will ask for something and I divert their attention. By the time they are coming back, amen, we have conversed like for five minutes in the church. So uh, I would excuse myself, I want to pass when there's a message that is serious, that is going to help this person. I would excuse myself, can I pass please? I, like I want to go to the bathroom. Then by the time he's now settling again to listen to the word of God, he's now thinking about, eh, how did this girl dress? As she's a minister's daughter. But eh, anyway, anyway, even if she dressed like that, you know, he starts now thinking of, about me, but his motive of coming to church was seeking God. But there's so much that the enemy plants, just like Jesus spoke in the parable about the seed that is being sown, some that is snatched. You know, guys, when someone looks at a church, they, they think it's a place of safety. It's not because a church is not a safety place. It's that the enemy sends people to be destroying the house of God. And, you know, I was listening to her whole testimony and she talked about how nice she had to be because they were asked, they were given this assignment by the devil. And this person who was also talking to them made them understand that when the church is busy arguing or acting lazy or anything, something like that. You have to agree with the past. You have to do what you are told to do. It's like while everybody's complaining, you have to do everything they ask you. So they gain the, the, the pastor's heart. They gain the credibility. They gain the trust while other believers are under the influence of this demonic spirits. That's why we're talking about discernment. Why are you behaving the way that you behave? Have we ever asked ourselves when we are angry and find out why am I angry? Yes, I feel like I'm angry almost the entire week, but why? Some other churches, they have this problem as, well, as we are speaking. People who have been sent by the devil to go to the church and they are very close to people who are praying close to junior pastors. They are there to spread the evil spirits. You see this man, we attacked with lust. There were different kinds of things that they had to go through because these witches were close to them. And this is not to bring fear. This is to bring understanding. And so that when you are there, wherever you are, you begin to pray and say, God, open my eyes. Help me not to be close to a witch. Because some people has lost God. They have been so many lives they had. These people, they come to you. They become close to you. They praise you more than they praise God. Because they are there to make sure that you love them the most. You see them beyond anything and everything. They want to be available for you. They want to talk to you. They show you they respect you. And, you know, they can even use you against your pastor because really they are there to kill, steal, and destroy. But it's not easy to think that a devil, a witch, can come to church and sit right in a church and be part of the church, not because they want to change, because they are there to destroy the church. We really need to pray for our churches, not just praying for the church that you are in, but really pray for discernment, discerning, praying, God, help me to see exactly, exactly what I must see. Because, you know, you know what she said? Uh, that made sense because I, 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 I have experienced that kind of those kind of people, which is in church. They would make you feel like you are so amazing, so powerful. Oh, my God. They want to bring so much uh, praising you, praising you. What they're doing, they are winning you over so that now you will give them the, your number. They can talk to you and start asking you how long you pray. They want to know more about your prayer life. They want to get in your business because they want to really stop your prayer life. You know, those people, just because you are more powerful in the spirit doesn't mean that they are not planning about destroying you. So the whole idea is not to bring fear. It's to know that not everybody who's saying, wow, they mean exactly wow. Some they are meaning, I'm planning to take you down. So I'm bringing this video, guys, so that we pray. I'm bringing this video so that we really pray for each other. Because sometimes you'd be thinking, what's really attacking the church is outside when the devil has sent some people. You know, she was talking about these things of testimonies in church when you're just busy praying, you only sometimes even thinking that the problem in your life is that person where she lives where and there. When that person is just close to you, she's giving you food, she's giving you stuff, she's giving you advices, she wants to be everywhere you go. You can't know them, you can't just figure them out. 
You have to pray, Father, open my eyes. If I am moving with a witch or if I'm staying with one, let me see it. Yes, it's darkness. So I would just go to churches to just disorganize. Then the youth, I would tell them there is a gig. I can just make you enter this club for free. We have these musicians, they are coming. Oh, Chris Brown is coming. Did, are you, do you have the ticket? I can just get you a ticket. So I would now be the kind of person to pull them now from church to the world. And when they go there in the world, they don't remain the same because I would take them in places where I know they are not going to still have that hunger for God anymore. So now they are in fornication, they are, they are clubbing, they are drinking. Mama, that lady is also bringing drugs. They are taking drugs. So the church is filling up, but the people who are there are not threatening the enemy. Even if they say fire to the devil, the devil will be like, I'm waiting for you. We'll be burning together. He's so well, this makes a lot of sense as to why there's, a, there's been a lukewarm kind of behavior and why some people move from being hot to cold. And it's sad. I, I feel sad for such uh, people in the faith. I remember there was this brother of mine who was really on fire for God. And he had an issue. I had to tell him that um, you need to be careful around this woman. There's something off about her. After I told him that there is something off, but I didn't want to say it. You know, I prayed for that woman and I encountered at a pipe and um, issue. I had to say she was a witch. And so I was trying to speak and it was too late for him because, you know, some people are coming with gifts and are coming with food and you're busy eating these things, you're receiving these things. And finally, when you, you have to make a judgment, you are blinded and you cannot think carefully because you're eating every day. And, you know, being Christian doesn't mean that because Jesus fasted um, that long, you shouldn't fast. You have to fast and pray and allow God and so that you continue being on fire for the Lord. And, you know, just to make story short, the thing that I was trying to, to, to warn him about happened. And did I pray? I did pray for him. But, you know, you have to make a decision. Prayer, you know, God is really, he wants to help you. But you have to make an agreement, just like salvation. You know, you have to make an agreement. You have to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. We can't push them in your throat. Someone has to confess the Lord and accept him as their God. So, guys, with all of this that I've been sharing today, Let's just stay in prayer and pray for each other. But let's just be honest with ourselves and be honest with God. Let's not allow being lukewarm. Let's not, let's not allow that. Let's not invite it. Let's not accommodate such behaviors because the enemy's intention is really to still kill and destroy. But Jesus also has an intention is that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. I would like to see your comments. I would like to hear your thoughts on the comment section. So may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May he shine his face upon you. Mwah.